Wednesday morning, the 25th of October. Good morning, Jonathan Count with you. Through till noon today, um, the figures for August and September show that the cost of policing the fracking protest at Kirby Misperton has reached £200,000. The frackers, the fracking company, have the right to go ahead and frack. The anti-frackers have the right to protest. You, the taxpayer, though, you foot the bill for the cost of the policing operation currently set at £200,000. Your thoughts this morning, is it worth £200,000 of public money to give people the right to protest, to exercise their democratic right, or is it a waste of public funds? Your thoughts, please. 01904 641 641. Harrogate. Scarborough. Selby. North Allerton. Loving life in North Yorkshire. BBC Radio York. BBC News at nine. Good morning, I'm Nathan Turvey. The government will be asked to provide additional funding for policing at Rydell's fracking site if North Yorkshire Police runs out of money. Figures reveal it's cost the force almost £200,000 in additional costs to police the protest there up to the end of September. Police and Crime Commissioner Julia Mulligan says they expect the next six weeks to be the busiest, with more than 300 lorry loads of material expected to be brought on to the Kirby Misperton site. BBC Radio York's Mike Kemp explains what the police are spending the money on. These are for August and September so far. So for August, it's £80,238. For September, it's £101,476. So just over £180,000. These figures uh, do not include officers' wages. They're just for over and above normal operational spending. So this money covers overtime, equipment, subsistence and travel. And Jonathan will be talking more about this over the next hour here on BBC Radio York. BBC Radio York. Good morning, Jonathan Cowart with you. On a Wednesday morning, the figures for August and September, just two months, show that the cost of policing the fracking process at Kirby Misperton has reached in the region of £200,000. I'd like to hear from you this morning. Do you think it's worth £200,000 of public money to give people their democratic right to protest at Kirby Misperton? Give me a call. It's 01904 641 641 or text 81333. BBC Radio York. Ten minutes past nine this uh, Wednesday morning at yeah. 01904 641 641 to register your opinion. Is the democracy, the uh, the democratic right of the protesters, worth the £200,000 of public money that's been spent over the last couple of months? Third Energy is still waiting to get final government approval to frack, but they say their preparations are well ahead of schedule. The figures released yesterday show that the extra cost uh, of policing the demos runs to in the region of Two hundred thousand pounds. Here's BBC Radio York's Mike Kemp again, just to run over how that money is being spent. This is the first time they've published these figures, and they'll be doing so every month from now on. These are for August and September so far. So for August, it's eighty thousand two hundred thirty-eight pounds. For September, it's one hundred one thousand four hundred seventy-six pounds. So just over one hundred eighty thousand pounds. These figures uh, do not include officers' wages. They're just for over and above normal operational spending. So this money covers overtime, equipment, subsistence, and travel. Well, the cost of policing the fracking protests has been released by North Yorkshire's Police and Crime Commissioner. I was on the programme yesterday talking about something entirely unconnected. Uh, Julia Mulligan. She says she's going to ask the government for help covering the costs of the fracking protest if North Yorkshire Police doesn't have enough money for policing at the fracking site. But Mrs Mulligan says finances will be OK if everything runs according to time. At the moment, the police have an operational reserve specifically to cover these type of, of events. Um, and um, we have had that reserve for about 10 years and we've never used it. Uh, and so we are using that money that we've got, if you like, put aside for this type of thing. As I say, should, should we need to uh, access additional funds, then I am seeking reassurance from the government that those funds will be available. Um, uh, uh, my counterpart in Sussex was successful in getting additional funding when they had uh, fracking protests down there. Um, so we will also, a precedent has been set, so I would be hopeful um, of success. But as I say, um, at the moment, um, we don't, we're, we're not at that, that point. 
point in time yet. Well, Mrs Mulligan says the cost of the policing operation at Kirby Misperton isn't actually the most challenging part of all this for her. The challenge uh, really is that public confidence in North Yorkshire Police continues, that the police are able to continue with the rest of the work they do away from the fracking site and the welfare of the officers who are actually there is well looked after. Let's see what you think. Audrey is on the line from North Frodingham. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning. Is it no, wh- then, I'm totally confused, really. I don't see that it's the, our responsibility as a country to pay for this policing. When Who are they protecting? Who are they there for? Are they there for the firm? If so, the firm should pay. If they were there for a football team, the football team would have to pay. Well, they're there to maintain law and order, to make sure that things don't get out of hand in any way. To, they are there to make sure that the law is enforced, that the, 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 the protesters can legally go about their business of protesting and expressing their dissatisfaction, their anger, their concern at the fracking going ahead. They're also there so that the company can carry, carry on their lawful approved business of, of drilling the fracking well. You've just said now that it isn't approved. Haven't you? Well, it's approved to go ahead and, and drill the test the, the test rig, yes. Yeah, I see. But so not wh- to do the actual fracking, so we haven't really it, got started yet. It, no, it, I think it's wrong that we should be paying for something that's really not necessary. Um, there are protesters out from our they aren't, they aren't terrorists. They aren't people who are going to cause a great deal of trouble. I don't know who they are. I've never been near Anne, but... On the other hand, I wouldn't think that they are. From what I've seen of the pictures, they seem ordinary, reasonable people. Many of them, many of them are. The majority of them probably are. But there is a situation, though, where we've seen some people engage in some disruptive, highly disruptive activities, which uh, would stop the the, pro- the process of third energy getting their their own personnel and other contractors on site, and that's something that they've got the legal right to do. My memory goes back to when I was working at the fish shop at Axby. And uh, we had a load of youngsters hanging around. They were there nearly every evening, you know, and they were your customers, weren't they? But one night they came in and, oh, they were agitated. Oh, they, yeah, well, well, we've just been racing this and we've just been racing this and that. I said, come on, settle down. And there was a copper that come after him and he came into the shop. I says, look, sir, do you mind just leaving us alone? I says, I will deal with this situation. If I cannot deal with it, I will send for you. And, you know, as soon as it had gone, they settled down. <laughs> Audrey, I wouldn't have messed with you in my time. Thank you very much indeed for your call this morning. Audrey, who says she's thoroughly confused by the whole thing but wonders whether this kind of policing is necessary. Your view, please. Is it actually worth £200,000 of public money to allow the protesters at Kirby Misperton to go about their uh, business of protesting, to register their, their anger, their concern at, the, at the, the, the fracking going on, or the fracking that will go on, the, the preparations that are being made for it? Um, or is it a waste of money? Let's see what the local MP thinks. Kevin Hollingrake is the Conservative MP for Thurston Malton. He's with us on the line this morning. Good morning, Mr Hollingrake. <coughs> morning, Jonathan. Is the cost of policing the fracking protests actually worth it in, in terms of democracy? I, th- I think there's two separate things here. The I, I do agree with Audrey. I don't think the local taxpayers should be footing the bill. I think m- much of the of the more uh, kind of some of the protesters that are carrying out some this, this, some of the more um, serious actions, more difficult to police actions, are connected to national campaigns, and I think I don't think it's fair then for local taxpayers to be paying for the policing of what is effectively a national campaign against fracking. You can't really divvy up, though, on the front line, can you? The cost of policing that, as opposed to the cost of policing this, it's all it's all one big mix. You may say some of the actions of the protesters are more extreme, some are less extreme. Well, I think it's quite clear. It's, it's the extreme measures that are most difficult to police. I absolutely have been clear. I fully support the right for people to stand at the side of the road and and have, hold their placards and, and speak out against something if they don't want that to happen. But it's completely different, I think, if somebody's lying in the middle of the road or locking themselves onto premises or vehicles, deliberately stopping a legitimate commercial activity taking place and interrupting the daily lives of other local business people and local residents and I think that's wrong and I think these people many of them are connected to a national campaign so I think the national per- the, 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 the funds for this policing should be met from the national purse What are your concerns about the, the cost that this is imposing on the police budgets of North Yorkshire Police? 
Yeah, I have real concerns, about £180,000 so far. <clears throat> and I raised this in the Commons, in the House of Commons last Monday with the uh, the Home Office Minister, the, the Policing Minister, Nick Hurd, to say that I wanted to meet him and I'd, I'd talked to the Police and Crime Commissioner as well, Julian Mulligan, and that we'd agreed that we, we would jointly go meet with the Policing Minister to, to make our case why this policing should be met from national funds rather than local funds. And uh, and that's is, is that uh, is there any movement or agreement on that? Yes, he, well, he, he agreed to meet us, and I think he, I'm sure we will be able to make, make our case. And I think this, the nature of shale gas exploration, if this is proven to be worthwhile and commercially viable, I think this will there'll be many more protests like this. And I think it's only fair that this, if this is this is a national campaign, that these the costs of this are met by the say, the national purse, not by local taxpayers. So the chief constable and the Police and Crime Commissioner of North Yorkshire don't need to be worrying and at their calculators all the time, drumming their fingers on the desk and waiting for this 1% of their budget figure to be reached. You're telling us this morning that it could actually be the case that Her Majesty's Government decides that because of the level of protest nationally, there could be a national pot of funding for this and that 1% needn't necessarily be arrived at. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I don't think we should wait for that 1%. I think we should... And the point I made in the Chamber last week was exactly that, that the, I think certainly the vast majority of even the costs of that 1% should be met by the national national government rather than local government. I mean, the, the, the costs of 180000 are this, the, over, the extra payments, the overtime for these police officers and associated costs. What, what's actually happening there, of course, is, is those police officers should be doing other work in North Yorkshire, should be, should be on the beat, which is, so that's, that's an added effective cost anyway. So that's where we want to see these people. We don't want to see the police, our, our, the quality and the, the numbers of our, our, uh, our police officers reduced because of this, these activities. So, you know, that, this is why I think we should make a proper assessment of the entire cost of this policing operation and make sure that gov government does fund it. You have referred a couple of times to a national protest and people from outside the area being on the the, the protest line. Of course, many of them are local people. They're, they're not from elsewhere. They're local people. They're your constituents with genuine concerns. Yes, I quite understand that. And I've all, all the time I've been involved with this Jonathan, I've been very keen to meet with protesters. They come to my surgeries. They pr they've protested outside my surgeries. I've met with them. I've done public meetings. Quite understand that there is concern, but you know, this is this decision to push ahead with shale gas exploration was taken in early 2015 because, before I became a member of Parliament. I think it makes sense to produce something we'd otherwise import, but we've got to make sure it's safe and it doesn't it doesn't significantly affect the the beauty of our countryside and the environment. So you know, I want to see those protect in place, but I can understand some people are concerned that will not be the case. But uh, I'm absolutely been been championing the, the the need for proper regulations, proper supervision, and if it's if it becomes clear that we can't do this safely, or we can't do this in a way that's sensitive to the environment and the landscape, then I will oppose it. Mr. Hollingrake, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning, Kevin Hollingrake, the Conservative MP for Thurston Malton, with his thoughts on the rights and wrongs of the protest. Your thoughts this morning. Barbara in Selby says uh, she doesn't think that North Yorkshire police should be policing it and she thinks Third Energy should employ security to look after the site. She says if they employed their own security service then there could be more concentration on policing going ahead in North Yorkshire. Sally says, Dear JC, have the right to frack. They haven't been given the go-ahead. It's unbelievable the amount of money. Third energy, says Sally, should be paying. After all, the police are not protecting the protectors, which is the, the term that some people choose to use for those who are also called protesters. Your thoughts, please. Is it worth this amount of money, public money, your money, to give people the democratic right to protest at Kirby Misperton, or is it a waste of cash? 01904 641 641 is the number to ring. Kay Crudson at breakfast. I'm putting your Yorkshireness to the test. Putting you through my fun Yorkshire citizenship test. Which famous thief was hanged in York in 17... 
39. Which British Prime Minister was born in Morley? Herbert Asquith. Which saint is York Minster dedicated to after one, two, three? St Peter. Who's on the line this morning? Who have we got there? Morning, Kay. Oh, Good. hello, Sir Gary. <laughs> Your Yorkshire Three Peaks are Ingleborough, Wernside and Penny Gent. There you go, you phone a friend. Waking up North Yorkshire. Kay Crudson at breakfast. Weekday mornings from six. BBC Radio York. Thank you very much indeed for all your thoughts and opinions this morning. Dillis, good morning, Dillis, says the fracking company should pay the cost of the policing. Fracking is dangerous and the protest must be allowed, says Dillis in Scarborough. Or is Julia Mulligan right? The government should pay. Government is encouraging fracking after all says Dillis in Scarborough this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Elaine, in her email this morning, says Theresa May and her government are committed to the UK's shale gas revolution. She puts that in inverted commas. That means thousands upon thousands of wells across England's green and pleasant land. I say England because, of course, the rest of the UK has already turned its back on her planned revolution. Fracking is at a stop in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. If this is what it takes to get just one well off the ground in England, and we are seeing the same resistance, the same protest and the same police cost at every site approved by the government for fracking, how exactly will thousands ever become a reality? Since moves to try to impose fracking upon English com- uh, communities started in earnest, public support, as shown in the government's own polls, has fallen. It now stands, says Elaine this morning, at just 16%. That means we can be pretty certain that resistance, protest and massive police enforcement will be needed at each and every approved fracking site from here on in. It's time for the government to take a long, hard look at the likelihood of their revolution succeeding. How will they be able to, um, how will they be able to deploy enforcement against growing dissent? Even trying to get two or three wells going at the same time cannot be policed in North Yorkshire. There are no resources to enforce it, let alone hundreds and thousands. It will hardly become a revolution to deploy just one well at a time as enforcement resources permit. There is little integrity in blaming protests for the rising police costs. The responsibility lies, says Elaine, with the Prime Minister yet again failing to listen to the people. Thank you for your thoughts. If you hold a different view, time to speak up and air that view this morning. 01904 641 641. We're talking about democracy here and the cost of democracy, aren't we? BBC Radio York BBC Radio York, Jonathan Cowart with you on a Wednesday, asking you this morning, is it worth £200,000 of public money? That's what's been spent approximately in uh, uh, August and September on the cost of the policing operation at Kirby Misperton. Is that money well spent to give people the right to air their democratic right to protest at uh, the, the the test fracking that's uh, about to start there at Kirby Misperton? Let's talk to uh, Dr Tim Thornton, who joins us on the programme this morning. Good morning, Dr Thornton. Good morning, Jonathan. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. Um, you are a health professional. You live near Kirby Misperton. You're a local person. Um, £200,000, a lot of people will be thinking, is a rare old lot of public money to be spending on policing the protest. Is it worth it? Well, it is a significant amount of money, but governments, of course, politicians choose how they spend their money, whether it's to support the DUP or to pay for policing. Now, Kevin Hollingrake's just been on the show, I listened to what he had to say, um, and he thought it was okay to to wave placards by the side of the road. He quoted Gandhi when he was elected uh, MP for this region, um, and Gandhi was known for his protest, and he certainly didn't just wave a placard, and he said the only safe and honourable thing to do for a self-respecting man is to do what I have decided to do, and that is to submit without protest to the penalty of disobedience, not for want of respectful, uh, respect for lawful authority, but in obedience to the higher law of our being, the voice of conscience. These protectors are trying their best to be uh, peaceful, nonviolent, 
um, and not to interrupt the, um, the, the the life of the community. Well, come so on, they, uh, let's just be fair. I mean, there are people who have concreted themselves into blocks or barrels in the middle of the road. That's, that. you know, I never saw Mahatma Gandhi do that, and, and that is a, a deliberate, willful attempt to to block access to the Kirby Misperton site, and the police are, are obliged to do something to about that, and that something is what's costing a lot of public money. I don't want to argue history. Um, of Gandhi and, and the salt marches and so on. However, um, his disobedience was now seen as a triumph for the human spirit. Um, and the uh, protesters have uh, can't walk the lorries for more than 20 minutes on a day that the police think that they were good the day before and allow it. Just explain, for those who don't know the, the terminology, just explain walk the lorries, would you? Well, uh, one way to interfere with the uh, process of fracking and to make your protest seen by uh, the world, by, by uh, the uh, media and the company, is to walk slowly in front of the lorries. Uh, and that uh, has been used, and it was accepted by a judge that this was a lawful form of protest. And it's enshrined in European law that uh, protest is legal and may interfere with the community and may interfere with the work process that's intended. And that is legal. But uh, it's been interpreted that the uh, gas company's uh, activities must be protected uh, at all costs and protest uh, is to be shut down. So the protesters then say, OK, well, what can we do to follow our conscience? And then you find escalation of activity, such as we've seen in the last few weeks. Now, I'm not condoning or, or condemning it, but I'm just saying that when you in, impose something on a community that really doesn't want it, that people feel is a tremendous risk to the well-being of that community in the longer run, then people will take things into their own hands. We are all quite well aware now of the feeling of uh, those people who... Uh, are protesting at the site at the moment. We, we were well aware of the way that some people would feel long before the fracking operation got underway at, uh, at Kirby Misperton because we've seen protests elsewhere. The public know that. Um, the question is, how much further do the protesters have to pursue their protests, sometimes doing things that prove very costly to the public purse in order to, to emphasise that? Because there comes a point at which protest turns into an active attempt to stop something happening. So, you know, waving the placard at the side of the road says, I don't like you doing this and I don't think you should be doing it. I think it's dangerous or harmful or foolish or whatever. But then when you go that one stage further and you actually physically try to put yourself in harm's way or to create a barrier, that takes it a stage further. That's the point at which it costs money. Is that a legitimate thing to do? Um, I'm not going to draw the line as to what is legitimate and what is not legitimate. But what I would say is that if the government continue to ignore the wishes of the people of Rydale, the wishes of the people of North Yorkshire... Um, then um, they will find themselves in a very difficult position where they find themselves unable to rapidly spread the drilling of wells across the whole of North Yorkshire, the whole of Yorkshire and the north of England. Um, I don't see how, with the current acceptability of this process being 15, 16, 17 percent or whatever of the latest uh, measure, I don't know how that they can continue to try to force us on the north of England. Um, and in Lancashire, we saw them bringing in police from Cumbria, uh, from all over the country, uh, to try to uh, support the Lancashire police. I can't see the protesters going away, and I can't see public enthusiasm for this activity, for the fracking activity, increasing so that um, it can be done in the industrialised way that it has to do in order for the companies to make money and for it to be a significant source of a fossil fuel. Dr Thornton, we shall leave it there. Good to speak to you this morning. Thank you for your thoughts on the subject. Dr Tim Thornton, uh, a health professional, lives in Kirby Misperton, and as you can tell, a man who is concerned about uh, the fracking operation um, as it's proposed and, and the process is going ahead at uh, Kirby Misperton. Let's talk to Maureen, who is on the line. Good morning, Maureen. Morning.
morning, Jonathan. What's your thought? Worth £200,000 of public money to give people their democratic right to protest? At this point, no. Why, why, why at this point, no? Because, as your previous person has just said and you've pointed out, a peaceful protest is all right until they, uh, until they evaluate what the effect is going to be on their area. Some people would say, and the protesters, or pr- pr- um, yeah. what, how, what do they call them, the protectors, that is how they evaluate, yeah, the, yeah, is, is how yeah. they, they name themselves, they would say it's too late by then. Uh, I don't really think they've given it long enough to see how our legislation works in practice. A lot of people have been frightened by the problems that arose in America, where lack of legislation and checks and balances did it, it result in water tables being changed and all sorts of other terrible things. I think we've got enough legislation here to give it a try and to have to waste money on people doing stupid things like igniting flares where there is gas and they could injure themselves and other people is a little bit too far until they've actually found out what the effect of the the experimental work is. But the, I mean, you, you don't doubt for a minute the sincerity of those people who are protesting at the moment. They really believe that w- what Third Energy are doing at the site and what the government is permitting is wrong. Now, you and I, Maureen, have spoken many, many times, and I know that you're a woman who is strongly in favour of all things democratic. I am, but not, to, to be take, not for the protesting to be taken to the point where it endangers other people. So there's a limit as far as you're concerned, and do you think that limit has been reached? Difficult to say, but to have to pour more police resources into it where it's sadly needed all across the county is not a good idea. Maureen, thanks very much indeed. Good to speak to you. Maureen, on the line from York this morning. Your opinion, please. Lots of comments this morning. Moira in Catterick, good morning, says the fracking company and the central government should pay for the fracking, um, not the local people. Do you mean the fracking or do you mean the cost of the policing of the fracking? Uh, local people don't want fracking, says uh, Moira, and yet it continues on. So she, she thinks uh, that the, uh, the local government shouldn't have to pay because of that. Reg in Malton, uh, why should the taxpayer pay for this, asks Reg. Should it not be the fracking company that have to foot the bill, um, as it f- happens at football matches? Rose in York says the protesters are not doing any harm. She says she has great respect for the police, but there has been nothing going on, and the police have been sitting in their vans talking and not doing anything. She goes past Kirby Misperton regularly. She thinks it is a waste of police resources. And Ian in Ebberston, morning Ian, uh, says it doesn't make any difference who pays in the long run. We pay by tax or by high gas prices. Thank you for that, Ian in Ebberston. If you just want to leave a comment, you can call 01904 641 641. Thank you for all your thoughts this morning. Is it worth £200,000 of public money to uh, police the protest at Kirby Misperton? Colin is on the line from Nottingham this morning. Good morning, Colin. Hi, good morning. Hi, good of you to join us. Um, what's your opinion? Is it worth the £200,000 of, well, out of the police budget of North Yorkshire? Well, I basically think it's unnecessary. I was at Kirby Mistressen yesterday for most of the day, and I, mean, I didn't actually do an actual head count, but I would say roughly there was one policeman there for every two protesters. Yeah? Now, I'd like to compare that to an experience... Two years ago, when I went to an anti-fracking protest in Nottinghamshire, um, where the whole operation was protested, pro- pro- policed by just two police officers. Uh, a protest on a similar scale? Uh, well, there weren't so many people there, but I would say the ratio of police to protesters was more like 10 to 1. In other words, there was 20 protesters and only two police. Um, and, and at that previous protest, were people concreting themselves in position so that they were, um, you know, a, a causing an obstruction? Were they uh, climbing a tower on the, the fracking site? Were they doing things like that? Because that's what it, it seems to be causing the, uh, as far as I can see anyway, and I, I personally, I haven't been to Kirby Misperton to look at it, but I'm, I'm looking at right, the, the yeah. stills and the video that I see. Were there things going on like that at the site you went to before? Um, well, some of the things that you mentioned did happen. Somebody did climb on the fracking rig. Um, but the point is, there's a sort of response, response situation where um, the, the protesters do something, the police respond in a particular way, the protesters respond to what the police have done, and so on, and it, it escalates. The, because the Nottinghamshire police took the political decision to do a softly, softly policing operation... 
the whole thing was very amicable. The point, I suppose, at Kirby Misperton is that if North Yorkshire Police, if the Chief Constable, Dave Jones, and the other senior officers at North Yorkshire Police took the decision that this was going to be a softly, softly protest, then basically there would be sufficient protesters um, there at the site to stop the, the fracking operation or the pre preparation for the fracking operation going ahead. And it's Third Energy's lawful right to go ahead and prepare to do this they've they've got permission to do it so the the chief right. constable really has no option does he right uh-huh um basically as as a protester our intention is to make it as difficult as possible for the people that are doing the fracking because we think it's wrong um and various people have different levels that they're prepared to go to to prevent this most 99 percent of the people that go to these things uh, I mean, I, I like me, I'm a grandfather. I'm concerned about my grandchildren, yeah? And most of the people I've met on anti-fracking sites are my sort of age, you know, they're not really sort of um, anarchist sort of, um, you know, people that are going to concrete themselves to things. They're just peacefully going about their business objecting to this thing. Um, Do, does it and, therefore, con I mean, you, you know, you portray yourself, and I have no doubt that you're absolutely right, as a very responsible citizen, you say you're not an anarchist or anything like that. Does it not worry you then, um, as it will worry some people in North Yorkshire, that a big slice of public funds is, is having to be spent, in the view of the police, on making sure that this um, perfectly lawful uh, preparation for fracking operation can go ahead? Well... Perfectly lawful is a, is a sort of, uh, um, I'm not quite sure, about, I'm not happy sort of characterising what Third Energy is doing as perfectly lawful. I mean, I know that it's not illegal. I'm not, I'm not saying it's illegal. Well, therefore, it's lawful. But, yeah, but it's, it's a perfectly. It's a perfectly. All right, then, let, forget the perfectly, just the, the legal. What, what, what they're doing, what they're doing, in my view, is criminal. Now, it may not be illegal, but just because something's not illegal doesn't mean it's not criminal. And therefore, you believe the money, that the, the, the policing money, is properly spent or not? Um, I believe that the police could take a different approach. That, that the, the, the level of policing is a political decision. It's a political decision because they are, despite all their claims, they are basically on the side of the energy company. They believe that the energy company should be allowed to do what they're doing. OK, we will leave it there. I'm sure if the police uh, chief constable of North Yorkshire were in the studio this morning, he would say there's no politics in this at all. But, Colin, but take your point, and you make it very, very well this morning. Thank you. That's Colin on the line from Nottingham. Um, closer to home, in Haxby, Marion is on the line. Morning, Marion. Good morning. Is the £200,000 properly spent or not? Well, no, it could be a lot better spent elsewhere, I think. Does that mean, uh, uh, and so whereabouts do you come at this from? Do you think the police are wasting money or do you think the protesters are wasting public money by their actions? I think it's a shame that the police feel, if it is their decision, that they've got to send that many number up there to supposedly protect people who are peacefully protesting and not putting themselves in danger. I think the people who have escalated what they're doing, that's in a response to the police numbers up there. And I agree with your last caller that, yeah, their actions affect the actions of the protesters and cause this escalation. Have you been there in person? I have, yeah, I've been up there. As a protester? As a protester? Well, yeah, yeah, if you if you call it that, it's it was in response, really, to... I'd signed petitions and everything else that, you know, the, the local kind of anti-fracking organisations had put out on Facebook and that kind of thing and not really got too involved about it. And then, then you know, when it sort of started escalating back in September and becoming a reality and you see the numbers of police up there, I did feel kind of compelled to go up there and stand with those pe the, the people up there.
And when you see, sorry, oh, I'm not 100. percent No, I can, I can tell, I, I can tell you not. But you do, you're doing a grand job of of, of, <laughs> of making your point. I mean, you sound like a very moderate person to me. Yeah, um, I've does it involved in any kind of protesting no. about anything? I'm quite opinionated. <laughs> opinionated posts out on Facebook and sign petitions. And, well, we like yeah. opinionated round here. Opinionated is our meat and drink. Um, so, uh, does it? Uh, and I'll put the same question to you. Does it not concern you that you? Now know because Julian Mulligan has, has has issued the figures, the Police and Crime Commissioner, that it's cost two hundred thousand pounds of public money so far. Well, yeah, when you know that they've got you know neighbourhood policing teams who do brilliant work, who are overstretched and getting axed left, right, and centre, and then they need to find money for this apparently. And you know, how much they surprised it is coming out of their budgets. I'm you know sort of cynically thinking. They must be having help to pay for this by the companies wanting to do all this horrible stuff up there. Well, there are there are those who They're are not allowed. I there are those who were saying on social media this morning to me, and I think our next next caller may just echo this that they believe the fracking companies should be playing. Marion, I hope you feel better soon. Thank you for calling the program, though. BBC Radio York. Lots of calls, lots of comments on the subject of the rights and rank wrongs of uh, the... F- well, not the fracking, uh, but the rights and wrongs of the cost of the uh, policing the protest. Mike Pannett, uh, quite a commentator these days uh, on police matters, former policeman himself, says the cost to police the fracking doesn't include the cops' salaries. Uh, uh, somewhere between 70 and 90 police officers a day. The true cost, he says, is much higher. Uh, we shall um, go to the less fevered worlds of... York's bar.